Hey everyone, I am here today to share some of my favorite Trader Joe's beauty and skincare bath products. If you have a Trader Joe's near you, you probably know that there's a small section devoted to um, skincare, beauty, hair, laundry, household type products. I feel like they've really become more experimental and trendy over the years. I started probably looking at their um, beauty products about two, three years ago, three years ago maybe. Four, oh my gosh, in 2017, um, about four years ago, when I tried out their hand cream, and then I really loved their sunscreen Enrich. I think it's called Terry Joe's Enrich. But then I found out that it combined um, vitamin A with or retinol palmitate, I think, with UV protection, which apparently is not the greatest combination for your skin. So I stopped using that. That was my holy grail sunscreen. I bought like two or three bottles of that, and I finally moved on to my new holy grail. I feel like I mention my holy grail sunscreen in every single video that I do, but I love it that much. It's the Kiss My Face um, Face Factor. I've definitely been dabbling a little bit more in that section of the store lately in the, over the last couple of months, and I'm here to share some of my favorite finds over those few months. Um, I haven't tried every product. There are some products that I really, really, really love that I haven't tried, like the spa shampoo and conditioner. I simply haven't tried those because they contain dimethicone. And then their um, face wash is really popular, but I do have pretty dry skin, especially during, during the winter time. So I have um, kind of stayed away from that. And plus, I have so many face washes um, right now. Maybe when I'm done with all of the ones that I'm currently working on, I will try that one out. Let me know if you have a favorite Trader Joe's product. Let me know what it is and if you have any suggestions for ones that I completely did not mention or even you know, that I don't even know about. All right, so I'm just gonna get started here um, in no particular order at all. I think I'm gonna talk about their body butters first. I have three of them. I kind of bought them all around the same time because I'm crazy, but I do go through these pretty quickly. They have different textures. That's the first thing I noticed. I have, this is the standard one. This is the coconut body butter. This is in store year round and it retails for $6 for eight ounces and then these are seasonal ones that I picked up over in fall and winter of this year. The pumpkin body butter, I think this is a fall um, limited edition. $5 for 8 ounces, at least in this area. And then the pomegranate one, 8 ounces for $6. Um, it looks like a smaller container, I think. So the standard one, as well as the pumpkin one, and I think they have other scents that come out throughout the year. I haven't gotten there yet. But um, I love it because it comes with a flippy top so you don't have to screw and unscrew with the coconut one as well. But the pomegranate one, for some reason, is a twist off. Not as handy. The pumpkin one is by far my favorite one. It has the thickest um, consistency. It is literally like a butter. It's not going anywhere. There are a lot of body butters out there that are just really like thick creams. This is really thick, but you know, it applies really nicely. It obviously dissolves and it feels like it sinks in. Um, this is really good when applied onto wet skin because it really just sinks in. It is a little difficult to spread on um, drier skin. Look at that, I'm almost done with it. So I had to film this video before I was done. Um, it's a really nice container. And the scent, it is not pumpkin. I mean, what does pumpkin really smell like? Carrots? sweet potatoes. Um, this is actually, to me, like an apple cider kind of scent. It's the kind of scent when you go into like, it's not really Michael's because that's like straight up apple cinnamon, but this is like a fruitier apple with a touch of cinnamon. Um, if you don't like that kind of scent, this probably isn't the one for you. It is pretty strongly scented, but I do find that it, yeah, it sinks in and goes away pretty quickly. Um, and let's talk ingredients. It does contain dimethicone in it, but no parabens, vegan, it has like ginger root extract, lemongrass, coconut extract, orange peel, a lot of different extracts in here. It is fairly natural. The reason I didn't check out these Trader Joe's body butters until now is because I feel like body butters in general are kind of, kind of overrated. Um, Especially, I mean, the Body Shop is probably the most well-known brand for body butters, and I tried two or three different scents. I felt that they weren't consistent across the scents, and then I felt like, most of all, they didn't do a good job of moisturizing, so that's why I stayed away from the Body Butters. I find that this one is really good at moisturizing. Um, I don't feel dry on my body. I feel like it does a good job 
and it's cheap and I really feel like this is much more natural than the body shop ones. It's cheaper, definitely. What is it? Like this one was five dollars for eight ounces. This particular kind, because it's so thick, lasts me about two months for eight ounces um, of everyday use. I will definitely be repurchasing this one when it comes back in the fall. We're going to move on to the coconut body butter. This is my newest purchase. I wanted to buy it for this video and to compare because this is the one that they carry year round. So I figured, I mean, it's the standard one. This one is slightly different too from the um, pumpkin one. It looks very similar, but it has a more frosting-like consistency. It's thick, but it's not as thick as the um, pumpkin one. It's like a frosting. It definitely spreads a lot more easily. It feels a little bit more hydrating because I think there's more water content or at least liquid co content in it. So I really think this would be a great year-round one and I can understand why it is the year-round um, body butter they carry. The thing that kind of puts me off about this product is a scent. It doesn't smell like straight up coconut. It smells like coconut frosting but chemically like it kind of gives me a headache a little bit i do love the consistency of this but man that smell i don't know if i can i kind of i did get a headache after i put this on last time i remember that um in terms of ingredients it's very similar to um the pumpkin one dimethicone a lot of the same extracts i really like this and i would repurchase this if the scent didn't bother me so much i know a lot of people love this product um and i think it does a really good job of moisturizing as well so eight ounces for six dollars again or this one was cheaper though for some reason so i will be definitely stocking up on this one in the fall okay this is my least favorite one the pomegranate body butter not because only of the packaging. This is a winter one, so you would think the winter one would be thicker, but this is the thinnest one of all. Focus, there you go. It's very like lotion like, it's watery, and the scent is identical in my memory to the St. Ives collagen one. It's this like vague, fruity, perhaps lemony kind of scent. Um, I like it. And the scent is very cheerful. It's very artificial smelling though. But I probably wouldn't ever repurchase this just because it reminds me so much of the St. Ives, which is also fairly natural. And so that one is cheaper, cheaper than Trader Joe's. This was five bucks for eight ounces. It's like a lotion texture. I wouldn't call this in any way a body butter. It's, it's a thick lotion. Next up is um, this Nourish Enriched Intensive Antioxidant Facial Moisturizer. Um, I think this one is fairly new. This is the Enriched Intensive version. They have a regular antioxidant facial moisturizer, which I've never tried out, but I know people love that one. This is a whopping 6 ounces, which is a lot for a moisturizer, for I think $4. This is amazing. This does not even contain dimethicone in it. It actually has sodium hyaluronate, which is hyaluronic acid in it. It contains a whole heap of great things like um, sunflower seed oil, vitamin C palmitate, jojoba seed oil, coenzyme Q10, aloe vera, chamomile, um, green tea, bayberry, coffee, vitamins galore. There's a lot of stuff in it. It's an antioxidant facial moisturizer. Oh, it has soluble collagen in it as well. Now, I don't know the science behind it. It's it's made for dry and normal skin and it's dermatologist formulated, fragrance-free, and paraben-free. To be honest, I didn't really like it that much in the beginning. I felt like it pilled up a lot and I kept searching, kept looking at the ingredients. So I was like, is it the diamethicone in it? But I didn't see any diamethicone. It uses glycerin. I think it was rather the serum that I was using underneath that was causing it to pill up. I'm no longer using that serum and I am loving this right now. It is, it feels moisturizing when you put it on. I highly recommend checking this out if you um, are interested in a cheap and affordable, but you know, packed with good ingredients kind of moisturizer. I tend to use this on my neck. Although your neck is one of the first places to age really, but I feel like my neck doesn't get as much sun exposure um, and it doesn't get as many like age spots and things like that or lines. So I tend to use a cheaper moisturizer on my neck and then I use the high-end ones on my face. But 
when I'm layering on a whole lot of like products like serums and oils and things then I will just use this because sometimes I feel like it's not necessary to use a costly moisturizer when you have a lot of costly other things on your face you know what I mean so that is when I tend to use this and I've noticed that I will mix a little bit of rosehip seed oil on into this and use it on my hands and my hands feel so good afterwards so if you're looking for a good hand cream this is also good or hand lotion this is a good one too four bucks for six ounces awesome by the way this video is in no way sponsored by Trader Joe's I just shop there on the regular okay this one I've spoken about a lot a lot of times it's a Trader Joe's tea tree tingle conditioner it is 16 ounces and I believe it retails for $3.99 I was also holding off on buying this one because I love fragrances and this one just smells like straight up peppermint I'm like oh that's kind of boring but I've grown to really like it and it certainly does tingle on the scalp if you put it on the scalp. The reason I love this is because it does not contain any silicones which is amazing. Of course no parabens or anything like that. It's like just water, tea tree leaf, peppermint, eucalyptus, nettle, and a whole bunch of other like extracts and stuff like that. It's really certified organic as well. This is one of the few silicone free natural conditioners I've tried that calms this mess that you see here. In high school, the sleek and smooth look was in, so I used a lot of Pantene with like heavy silicones and to weigh my hair down, and my hair looked good using those. And then when I got into the natural thing, I was a little nervous. My hair did not look that good for a while there. But I discovered two conditioners that are natural that have done the job. This is one of them. This one is cheaper, and it's so much easier to get a hold of this. Highly recommend it if you have frizzy hair, if you're looking for something natural. And also, it claims to alleviate dry scalp. I don't know that it does because I tend not to put it on my scalp. I tend to condition from like my ear down. But occasionally when I feel like my scalp needs a little bit of moisture, I only use this one because it has peppermint in it and tea tree oil. I feel like anything else might kind of aggravate my scalp or you know make it oilier when I've done that it's left my scalp feeling clean and tingly and um, just really nice and it hasn't really aggravated it and my friend she really likes it for her dry scalp it gets pretty good ratings on makeup alley which is my go-to website when I want to read reviews I feel like the reviews on makeup alley are probably among the most honest on the internet last but not least I know I said I don't have that many products but this is a long video already this is a fairly new product I saw it when I was passing by. I walked out of the store without purchasing it and then I went back in and get it because I just had to. So this is the new facial cleansing oil with argan and coconut oils. It's 4 ounces for $7. That was the reason I put it back first because I was like, that's kind of expensive. But then when I left the store, I did the math in my head and I'm like, girl, no it's not. I was really set on making my own cleansing oil, but then I'm like, maybe I'll try this one out. Maybe it's a little bit cheaper or whatever. It's a cleansing oil if you don't know what that is I have a video on it I will link that down below but basically you can either double cleanse with a cleansing oil so you put this on first and then you wash it off with a regular cleanser to basically protect your face from being over stripped of its oils for me uh, because my skin is drier I tend to just use this kind of wash in the winter time because I don't want to strip my face at all of any oils I've tried two cleansing oils in the past. I think I've done reviews on both of them. I will put them up here. I did a review on the Innisfree Green Tea Balancing Cleanser um, and the Josie Marin Argan Oil one. Those two perform very, very similarly, um, and those are the only experiences I had with commercial cleansing oils. I had made my own just using straight up argan oil in the past. So this was a third. This one was different from the other two. This is more like a traditional oil cleanse, like the one I was doing with straight up argan oil. Although it does have um, like triglyceride, some laurates and things in it, it's not straight up oil, but it feels almost like it. The thing about the Innisfree and the Josie Marin one is that when you um, put it on and then you wash it off, it kind of just washed off really clean. Um, it was like there was nothing on your face left. This one leaves a bit of oil or some sort of residue so that it feels like something has not been washed off. On one hand, I feel like that is better for your skin because it's not as stripping. But on the other hand, the reason I want to buy a commercial cleansing oil is because of that feeling sometimes. 
So I haven't really loved this that much yet. I've only used it twice. But I think that if you're starting out with cleansing oils or if you have really, really dry skin, this is a good one to try out. It's a lot less expensive than obviously the Josie Marin one or the Innisfree. Even Burt's Bees, I think theirs is like also around this size and it's like 11 or $12. So this is about half that price almost. It's probably got a lot fewer ingredients in it, which is probably better for you or at least more in line with what a lot of people who are into natural products are looking for. That was the longest sentence ever. I'm going to rephrase that. I'm pretty sure this has fewer ingredients in it than like the Josie Marin kind with Innisfree. So it might be more natural or in line with what someone who's into natural beauty might be looking for. The residue isn't nearly as thick as the regular oil cleansing method. It mostly washes off, but it doesn't wash off as cleanly as the other two that I've tried. So those are my six products that I have tested out. I've tested out more um, that I didn't really like that much. Like the Enrich um, SPF, I loved that sunscreen. If you don't have a problem with the retinol palmitate and um, UV protection, by all means, go out and t try it out. It's like $4 for 4 ounces or something. I loved it. It was moisturizing but not too much. It didn't leave a greasy cast or a white cast or anything like that. If you have tried other Trader Joe's products and loved them or hated them, let me know down below and I will definitely be checking more out in the future. I definitely want to try their micellar face wipes. Anyway, thanks so much for watching and for subscribing if you do. Let me know if you like the video with a thumbs up and um, otherwise I will see you next time.